You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Eric, I have an awesome idea, okay? This is my idea. Let's dig up, instead of dinosaur bones, old actors from over 30 years ago and put them in a movie that they have no reason to be in at all. We're talking about Jurassic World Dominion. How the hell are you doing today, Eric? The fifth highest grossing film in 2022. So far, uh, released in IMAX, 4DX, Real D, 3D, and Dolby Cinema. This is a marketing studio movie in all of its glory. I am not happy to talk about this one. No, this is this movie's actually really great. And and I'm not being sarcastic. This movie is a great Mission Impossible movie if they just took the dinosaurs out of it. Because because the whole wherever they were, not Egypt, but wherever they were where they had the Velociraptor chases and things, very bond, very mission impossible, right? Was that Spain? I think they were uh but but yeah, uh it, it's uh, yeah, uh, not surprising that this this shit franchise uh, called Jurassic World, a movie that's supposed to be about dinosaurs, uh, go ahead, uh, went ahead and took the dinosaurs and put them in the back seat. The entire movie, uh, and made them have feelings. The, they uh, they're interacting now. They're part of the family, so therefore they can sit back and we'll worry about something else. So. Yeah, where dinosaurs are just kind of a, a fly in the background there while everything else is happening um, is how far gone this franchise has become. But here now, here's the thing, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to argue. It works. Like, like, like listen, I, I, it's it's just become so flanderized that it's it's a cartoon now. I've told you this before. I, I've said, repeated this over and over again. And I'm at a point right now where I'm... What's that part uh, in grief acceptance where I'm just like willing to be like, you know what? Sure. Because uh, after watching this and just realizing that like, you know what? Let's let's put a pin on this because it, it relates to a lot of the Riley talk. Yeah. You know, it does. like yeah. how, how and where I'm going to build into from that, what I'm talking about, because this franchise started off as like a, a, a techno sci-fi thriller right like right messing with genetics in theory from a mosquito that was uh captured in tree sap right like the science of it actually was was fun to think about but now here we are where we can just uh well uh harvest and farm dinosaurs for their genetics at this point and see, like, all right, well, they're around. Let's see if we just can't mess with them and see if they have anything that we can use. And let's automatically put them on the black market because that's what human beings do. Yeah, this this movie is <laughs> one. We are on our way to Flintstones. Yeah, no, it is. But, but see, like you just said, the Riley talk. I will say that. This is where the franchise has become, though. It's because of – well, because of us, man. Uh, yesterday, this was the first movie that I took my daughter to together. She's almost six years old, and I was six years old when the first Jurassic Park came out. Oh, so I figured – Build up the story you know, a, a bit more. Sorry to cut you there, but about how uh, – you said you that you were worried about like if she wanted to see this movie or not or Jurassic Park or – well, yeah, because she saw the previews for this a few months ago, and she was like, oh, dinosaurs, Dad, I want to see dinosaurs. And I'm like, ooh, I, I don't know, because I always think of Jurassic Park and how the T-Rex ate the guy off of a toilet. So I was like, that's it's pretty violent, right? I just said the raptors. Um... The raptors are scary, right? They're scary, but you see a T-Rex eat a person. So it's like, okay, like, you know. So I didn't know you gave me the suggestion. You said, well, why don't you show her Jurassic World, a little bit more modern, a little bit more friendly, see how she deals with that. And I thought that was a good idea. So I showed her Jurassic World. I haven't seen it since I think we reviewed it, right? So I haven't seen it since. And that whatever that genetically made dinosaur was um, just 
rips people apart in that movie. I forgot about that. And I'm watching her and she was like, not faced. I will say then this movie, I want to get it off now because I don't want this to be about daddy daughter, you know, review here. But what was really cute is at the end of the movie, when the T-Rex is fighting the big bad dinosaur, which I have gripes about, uh, she stands up in the middle of the theater, no joking, and puts her fist up and says, go T-Rex, go T-Rex. Yeah. And, like, and people in the theater were laughing. Everybody had their kids with them. Nobody under the age of 10, children age, was there. I mean, it was all Riley's age. It was all six years old. So that is where we can segue to this. This is where the franchise has become because we grew up with it as kids. And now that we have kids, we are showing them these movies. And the studio knows. The studio knows we can't make it boring, uh, Blade Runner-esque dinosaur movies, right? These kids don't care about the science. They care about the dinosaurs. Yeah, that's that's really where I'm at with the acceptance part of it. Uh, do you remember the documentary, the documentary, uh, The People vs. George Lucas? Yes, I do. That's I'm relating it to this completely, mm-hmm. where I am the people and this movie is George Lucas. And I, I realize now that it's like, oh, I get that you weren't making this movie for me. Yes, yeah, so you were making it for children. Yeah, as much as I wanted the continuation to go, um, but no, that one was was gone. That one was gone after probably Lost World, the second one. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, after Lost World, which came out in 97. Anyway, okay, so let's get into this, okay? So I'm not a fan of Jurassic World. Everybody knows, Eric, that you're not a fan of Jurassic World. Definitely not a fan of Jurassic Mansion. Neither are you. This movie takes place four years later, and they didn't kidnap, like... Owen and oh, oh Lord! What's what's the redhead's name? Is his girlfriend Bryce Dallas oh. Howard? Uh, Claire. Yeah, I know Claire. Thank you, thank you, Claire. Uh, so Owen and Claire are living in a remote California, Alaska, in a cabin, and they have the girl there. She's fourteen years old. You can't go past the bridge. Blah blah blah. Dinosaurs and humans are living together now. I mean, we just have to accept this. And this is something that I cannot accept right off the bat. Um, They are trying to humanize dinosaurs? They're just trying to to live with them. And this seems kind of like the silly part of it because there's narration, which when a movie opens and ends with narration, I feel like it's kind of... That's maybe where I lean more into like the children part of it because it seems more of like the story, you know, once upon a time. And at the end, it's, you know, and then they lived happily ever after. So that's where I feel like the narration is kind of waters it down a bit. But the dilemma that they're with is that, okay, we brought these creatures back from uh, extinction. We are responsible for them. Do we take care of them or do we treat them like all the other animals in the world here? Which it's a genuine question. Like you, you could, you know, with any hunger or food shortages that you would were having, you've now increased them uh, a lot uh, from the dinosaurs you've created. You've also solved a lot as well too. Uh, but then you ruin it again by creating the locust. It, it's, it's, there's a lot of, of, issues globally and locally that arise from from all this it seems kind of uh, unusual though that in given in the amount of time that had gone from the first movie to now that there are that many dinosaurs on the earth and that many species of dinosaurs on on the earth it seems like there's a lot and it didn't seem like there were that many in the park and all it took was 10 years? No, 30, right? I mean... From the oh, first from, movie? Oh, oh, uh, from, from Jurassic Park in 93 or Jurassic World? From Jurassic World. Oh, yeah, probably like 10 years. Yeah, because that's... We're, we're assuming... Because well, this it came out in 2015, so less. Okay, hold... I, we'll get back to this movie, but, like... The, the, chronologically, like, the, the novels are Jurassic Park, Lost World... And then um, Evolution of Claire, which is Jurassic World. What? 
Evolution of Claire, Jurassic World. Yeah, so there's a book that came out in 2018 that is a part of the canon in publication uh, that is uh, about the college intern Claire. Um, I would imagine that uh, her story, that that book was uh, inspired, uh, it's a young adult novel, um, it's based upon the Jurassic World trilogy, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Wow, God damn it. You know, you know, like, this... I am upset, and I'm trying to not make this episode be loud and obnoxious, you know, because this is so – this is just so far from what it was. I mean I watched the original Jurassic Park when I was a kid because it was cool to see these dinosaurs. You never seen anything like that at the time, right? Remember, it was a technological marvel but with this, how they made it. I understand, but isn't this like most of anything now? Like Star Wars is this way. Like even parts of the Caribbean, any – franchise that sticks around this long is is going to get ridiculous i i, I have to say i mean uh, everything even uh, i mean of course even marvel is is going to lose a lot of people with the multiverse stuff as well too you know but uh, star trek has even had its its issues and that's been around since the 60s i'm just saying like i'm just it, it's just when you get a first movie that you watch now as an adult and you realize there's a lot more going on that you never paid attention to, right? Like the science and what's going – like for an example, last night I was watching some scenes, right, on my phone of the original Jurassic Park just to kind of refresh my memory because I got time to watch the whole movie. The reason why they had the dinosaurs that they had in the first movie, John Hammond says, because that is the DNA that we found. There, there was no way they could have developed thousands and thousands of different types of dinosaurs. These were the dinosaurs that they could get. Yeah. Right. So it's like, okay, so you got 20 dinosaurs. Where in the heck did you find thousands of others? It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, it just, it's annoying to me. Uh, it's also annoying that the Raptor blue is back. <sighs> yep. Yeah. And it has a baby named beta. Well, yes. And blue is st not stalking Owen, but she's kind of like, She's just like, hey, you know, I'm around. <sighs> okay, this this is frustrating because having raptors be what raptors were in the first one to have it go to be blue is so irritating. That's not at all what these things would do in the first movie. If if the raptors babies would have got captured in the first movie, it it wouldn't it wouldn't sit there and give a staring contest with the hero and pretty much, you know pathologically say go get my baby rescue my baby it would eat the guy yeah i i had thought that too uh, but he did the hand thing stop it just stop her because she even bit the hand too saying you better get my baby you're Come you're on. hostile and i'm putting up my hand right now can you feel it no yeah i just <laughs> dude, i was so irritated i've always hated that you know because they wanted to do that with the alien franchise i'm just like no don't do that. Don't do that. You know, it, it's just, yeah, it's getting frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. Uh, what also is frustrating is Apple product is the villain of this movie. Yeah, it, it very much seems uh, that uh, Apple guy was the Tim, Tim Apple. Tim Cook. That guy's Tim Cook. If I was Tim Cook, I would be suing for, for theft. That guy's a straight up clone. It looks just like it. It, if there was any one character who could kill this movie, it was him. I, uh, I I have a lot of issues with this movie, but he seems to just be kind of like, you know, when I understand this is supposed to be a silly movie, but his his bad guy role is just so. It, it might be the worst bad guy I've seen this year. Right. No, it's 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 so Bond and it's so terrible. Like he is this evil rich guy. How is he rich? We don't know. Who has a secret volcano lair? Not exaggerating. Like it's in a mountain, right? Yeah, he's surrounded he's rich by dinosaurs because, because he's because of genetics. He's he's another billion. Hey, hey surprise everybody! Uh, what's this? Uh, uh, and poor B.D. Wong too. Geez, this scientist has worked for now his third billionaire, Dr. Henry Wu. Wu. It's like his third billionaire that says, hey, uh, I want you to do dinosaurs. Ever, he's probably just wants to take a break. He's just like, man, I think I just want to go into like 
study the ocean or something for a bit. It, it, the dude has just been contracted. And how many? He destroyed everything. He destroyed two parks and now the world because of this. And he's just and he's stressing because of the locusts. Uh, what a weird oh, no. character. No, okay, okay, okay. Screw Doctor Wu. I know that rhyme, but screw him. Well, because, obviously, yeah, because this because guy, without him, the world would be fine. Well, no, this is it's nonsense because he wasn't even established in the first movie. I went back and watched that scene on YouTube. All he was, he was a background character that was just like, oh, here's Velociraptor eggs. And they're like, okay, you never see him again. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then all of a sudden Jurassic World comes out and it's kind of like The Force Awakens where it's like we're going to remake it, but we're also going to reboot it. Let's 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 dig up some old characters that people may find familiar. Let's put Dr. Wu in. OK, let's have him be another background character and be done with it. To have this whole focal point of John Hammond actually had a partner, Dr. Lockhart or whatever. And this was his wife and clone and and, and cancer. And, and oh. Yeah, it, it's. You're stacking a lot on top, and it's it's just gonna topple over eventually, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's so frustrating. Um, so why? Okay, so so blue, uh, is 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 outside of Owen's cabin, kind of just doing its thing, teaching its baby, reproduced Godzilla style. By the way, if people didn't get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened to all the dinosaurs being female? It doesn't matter. Life finds a way. Yeah, life finds a way. So while this is going on, we get a massive, massive locust uh, epidemic going on. Swarms of locusts. Um, this is the only part that my daughter was a little terrified in because it was kids in peril running away from these gigantic prehistoric locusts. Um, you could tell any smart human being – kid, this plot is messy um, – that I think it's called Bison is the name of the company, right? Apple? What's that? Oh, bio, uh, Biosyn? Biosyn, Biosyn. Let's just call them Apple just to be jerks, right? Uh, yeah, he's going to retcon that. All, the, <laughs> all these fields across the Midwest are just getting, like, all these wheat fields are getting torn up by these locusts. And we bring back Dr. Adley Sadler. She comes back. We dig her out of the grave. We haven't seen her since Jurassic World, Jurassic Park 3, which she was in a bit part from that movie. And... Uh, and they're like, you know, interviewing this this farmer, and she's just like, yeah, my crops. And then Adley Sadler's like, hey, those crops over there are lushing and green. Why, why is that? And the farmer's like, because that's apple. And she's like, oh. It's like, really? The government couldn't figure this out? Like, I could figure that out. If every single crop is well, destroyed. <laughs> assuming that, the, that they know, you know, but that uh, Tim Cook, has um lined he what was it something like thirty six billion that they recorded or something like that in in profit and this had said in the movie some uh, ridiculous number obviously but enough to where you assume that he has control of everything right so then I want to ask you this question because again I did go see this movie with the with the six year old there was a lot of potty times I don't know if I missed something but the movie didn't tell me or I was not paying attention. Um, what was the point of Apple and Tim Cook developing these locusts? World domination? Uh, that he would control basically the uh, food supply. What? Uh, that he could make it to where, um, obviously you could, you know, use bio and seed only, um, and that he he could just control and program them to eat whatever as well too. Doesn't what to evil eat. bad guy would ever do that? Uh, the the bad guy for this movie. Oh God, Eric, that's so lazy. Yes. Oh my God, that is frustrating. Okay, while this is going on, Claire also in the beginning of the movie, she has a team of people because there are now people. Of course, human beings are terrible creatures. We are worse than dinosaurs, right? All dinosaurs do is eat, sleep, and make little dinosaurs. We 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 had to take dinosaurs and we have to kidnap them and we have to sell them on black markets. And she starts the movie with saving dinosaurs at an illegal breeding farm. It's like, oh my good god! There is one good thing because I am talking a lot of nonsense that I did notice about this movie though, and I will praise the movie on this. And I'm not joking. They did something that other two movies haven't done yet. 
and what the first movie did. They used actual animatronics. They used real puppets, too, with the CG. I noticed that. I don't know if you did. Did you notice, like, some of these dinosaurs? Oh, were yeah, real? yeah, the baby triceratopses for, for sure. Uh, yeah, a few other ones, they had done that. One of them, it felt like, was, was a hand puppet almost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it yeah. was the one where the the video, uh, Maisie on the video, uh, that triceratops, the baby one, it felt like it was a hand puppet. It really did. But I, I, I'm not bashing that. I'm, I'm all for... It, maybe it's just a, the era that we grew up in, right? But well, yeah, I was like, I'm like, I'm like, some of the raptors, you know, when they did close up of the raptors, when they did close ups of all the dinosaurs, it looked, it looked, you know, like they, like they built it, which I actually I was kind of happy about, right? Dude, like, I, I have been while you went off on the run, I've been looking, rereading, and really trying to find if there's any more motivation to, uh, to dudes, uh, takeover, and I there there was not it's just it's just straight cartoon villain i did it for the power oh really so there was no controlling the food supply no i, I think that was it uh hold on the guy's name was lewis dogs and died dogs dodgson uh yeah that's all he's doing he's just doing it. what's his name ceo lewis dodgson do me a favor since you're looking stuff up, is this? <gasps> no, Eric. Remember in the first Jurassic Park where uh, the guy from Seinfeld goes to wherever to meet the guy, and he gets the Barbasol can. Yes. And the, the guy was like, "Dotson, Dotson, we got Dotson here." And then, and then also Tim Cook in this movie has that Barbasol can. Is that that guy? I know. I thought that was Dotson. Isn't this guy's name Dotson? Is Dodgson? Okay, I, I was okay. I was actually gonna give him credit there for a second because why would he have the barbell saw can? Uh, true. Hold on. Let me, well, why do he have a lot? I think probably just for nostalgia, to be honest. Just yeah, for the, just for kind of the throwback of everything. Yeah, but how would he? How would he know? I I I do not know. Um. I'm gonna look it up. Should you find anything or not? Yeah, actually, it's my bad. Uh, yeah, it, it is Dodgson. Are you kidding me? I, I was right. Yeah, you're. He's credited in Jurassic Park as 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 a Dodgson spelled the same way. You know what I'm talking about, right? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, this is that guy. It this guy. Be... This makes sense now, Eric. This does. Oh it's my god! Back. Yeah. You know why that's... this makes sense? Pieces it all together. Because the dude from Seinfeld was working with Dodson, who owned or worked for, I'm assuming, a rival company because the company that started the Jurassic Park thing was Ingen. Yep. Yep. Wow. wow. I didn't piece that together. Wow. So we just discovered this right now, everybody. Does this... Okay, so now that we know that we have another throwaway character like Dr. Wu, we have the guy who meets... Seinfeld guy gets the barber's hall can. Dotson, Dotson here. Do, does this movie make it fun now? Or is it just another stupid, hey, let's just pull something else out of our hat? Or does this kind of complete the world now? Well, now I'm looking in, in this. Uh, in the novels, Biosyn is Ingen's, uh, InGen's corporate rival. Dodson is an employee that helps uh, in the theft of corporate secrets. Uh, Makes only Dotson makes only a minor appearance in the first film, but is not named. Oh, yes, so he he's also uh, oh, Biosyn's in in several of the video games, I guess. So Biosyn's been around, right? So okay, so now that we just dis discovered this, and nobody else has ever discovered this in the history of it, so we're the first ones to claim it. <laughs> does this make it movie? Does it make the movie somewhat better that they're that they are? going that deep to complete this world uh no no it does not no okay because i kind of got a little excited there it, it it it's nice that they connected that back in but the character still acts and behaves uh Stupid. horribly yeah yeah he's not even a villain really like i mean he's not even twirling his no, mustache he doesn't do anything he the yeah. entire movie he's on the phone barking orders and telling people what they're going to do as they are already doing it. 
Right. While he's eating peanuts, I think. That's like his thing. Yeah, it, it's really um, not threatening at all. And he has if a little temper tantrum, too, at the end. Right. He has like a little weird, he like hits a chair. He gets, people get like, oh. you know, if you're going to go this slapstick and this ridiculous, you might as well just have him walk around eating an apple. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, you're. you're... I mean, like, if you're going to jump the shark, you might as well. Okay. So, uh, Evil Tim Cook. The plot is Evil Tim Cook has Dr. Wu from the first movie in Jurassic World develop these locusts. And while that's going on, they also are trying to find the clone little girl. So they could study her, take her DNA to say, quote unquote, to help cure cancers and illnesses in the world. That's the whole point, they say. And, of course, they hired these team of mercenary people to steal the girl kidnapper, which they do. And then we get our old people back. We get at least Sad, like we said, she goes and she gets Sam Neill, uh, which, oh, God. What is Sam Neill? Thank you. I'm an idiot. Alan Grant. And then she has a contact with uh, with Mr. Ian Malcolm, who works for Apple, right, as a secret agent, right? And we got the band back together. The band is finally together the first time since 1993 that all three of these characters are together at once on the same screen. Did this do anything for you? Was it like a, ah, uh, or was it a, uh? I I mean, of course I wanted to see this. And... You know, I'm not gonna lie. It, it was I enjoyed watching them more than I did uh, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. I like, would agree. Like I would agree. way more. Yeah, yeah, I actually would agree with you on that one. Like they, those three had a chemistry. I also love too. If you notice, just like little things that this movie does. Like we just discover discover the whole dots and thing. Um, jumping way ahead towards the end uh, when all of them are together at the end and they're fighting that big bad dinosaur. Right. Right. Uh, and and Malcolm goes underneath the car to hide. Yeah. When he saves the day, his shirt's unbuttoned. He looks down because somebody notices his shirt's unbuttoned. He kind of smiles and buttons his shirt back up. I thought that was a callback to cute the cartoon. Thing. Yeah, cute little thing there. Um, so then we get Mission Impossible Dinosaur. Right. Uh, the little girl gets kidnapped. There is also this American. Uh, pilot that is a smuggler as well. She sees a little girl and now we're in Spain or somewhere that's definitely oh. Bond, definitely Mission Impossible. And there's an underground of, of, of black market dinosaur selling trade. And then we get another uh, blonde, no name female mercenary who's a badass who has trained velociraptors to kill when there's a red laser on its victims. <laughs> okay. And um yeah, we get this humongous chase of dinosaurs roaming the cities and people getting just chomped up. <laughs> like, like that one scene. There's one scene when when Owen's on the motorcycle and he turns a corner and this guy's on a segway, doesn't pay attention, there's a dinosaur behind him. And he and the dinosaur picks him up and he lifts his head back and the guy's legs are still wiggling in the air. Why the dinosaur is eating him? I'm just like, oh God. Like, I mean some of that stuff was fun. But this chase scene is 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 so Mission Impossible. It, yeah. It's it's it, I don't understand why it's here. I mean, you you know why it's here. I know why it's here, but it, I don't know why it's here. Like, I mean, like, do they feel like because of the famous chase scene of the T Rex in the first movie when they're in the car, you know, um, that they have to one up it because they did a chase scene with the Velociraptors in Jurassic World, right? So they that's that what they're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. They just thought like this would be cool chasing with the. I, you know, what? this felt like. Have you ever played any of the Jurassic Park video games? Unfortunately, I've only played the very, very first one, which was so difficult I couldn't even pass the first level. Oh, the this, one on Sega. Yeah, uh, this movie just it kind of just feels like the these video games now. And this is what a lot of a lot of these action movie uh, have have. Um, that are towards like the tween market. It really feels like they're just cutscenes from a video game now. Uh, I would that's, agree. That's all this really felt like. I don't know if this was um, Jurassic Park or if it was like an Uncharted. It, it it felt like the same thing. Yeah, it did. You're right. And then also while this is going on, Owen has reunited with his friend 
from Jurassic World, the guy who co-trained the Velociraptors with them. And, of course, he wasn't going to die. He's also a secret agent now? Hey, sure. Sure, because 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 the bad guy mercenaries go to exchange, you know, whatever. Because I thought they had the girl, but they didn't have the girl. But then they did have the girl. Then they didn't have the girl again. But anyway, uh, some of the mercenaries were actually secret agents. And big, huge chase. And we have to end it with uh, Claire and the pilot. What is her name? Uh, I've Han, seen Han, Han Solo. Yeah, yes, Han Solo, but where? But her eyes. Uh, Kalo is it Kalo Watts? I think. What else has she done? Because I've seen her in something recently. Because those eyes are piercings. Uh, Dewanda Wise. Uh, she was in The Heart of They Fall. Uh, Fatherhood. Let's see. I've Twilight seen her. Zone, the weekend. Really? Nothing. Nothing big. Uh, how to tell you're a douchebag? Is that is that you? No, not really. I can't really see. Nothing anything. big. Huh? She just she just kind of looked really familiar to me. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything stand out here. Nothing stand out, huh? No, just a bunch of TV stuff. Okay, all right. She just looked really familiar to me. So after this, they uh, they they're going to fly to Apple that's surrounded by dinosaurs. Right? I mean, it's just like the whole field surrounded by dinosaurs. Yeah. Keep on talking to me about that. Tell me about what's the purpose of these dinosaurs roaming around this area for a this second. Is, this is the Biosyn uh, farm, I guess, as it were, as they're flying over to go visit uh, the Biosyn uh, headquarters. Uh, they are seeing over this whole ecosystem that Biosyn has created inside the, um, I guess the you know the top of this volcano or whatever mountain that they're that they're in, and it's not a volcano; it's a mountain. It's like a, I don't, I don't know what's that cove, like a you know, the the hidden valley. Uh, there's a bunch of dinosaurs are there, and that's where they farm them, and that's where they can uh, tag them and pull them and do genetic experiments on them. I don't know if it's like. Uh, ethical or not but i'm sure that doesn't matter it's it's in italy is that where it was well another thing that doesn't make any sense the reason why i asked you to kind of like kind of like elaborate on it more is that they said that these things are like mind controlled too because later in the film when we get a massive fire and later i'll explain that yeah they, they can control it like every, all the dinosaurs are, are complacent and they can obey orders Okay. They can march it's, it's, in single file, and they can do circles, and they can roll over. It's pretty stupid. So we get we get introduced to some new dinosaurs, but before we, okay, so we get into this long neck dinosaur that has Freddy Krueger claws. I, seriously, if you guys haven't seen the movie while you're listening to this review, like it's a long neck dinosaur, kind of looks like a T Rex, long neck with feathers, and it has Freddy Krueger hands. And there's like a deer that's just minding its business, and it just slaps it away. Yeah. It's like, like, what is this thing? Is that even a? I'm sure it's a dinosaur. It is. But now we, but now we got an apex predator, the biggest predator that's ever roamed the earth. Never even heard of this dinosaur. So the one that you're thinking of, that that it's basically just this huge uh, kind of with a beak and got three fingers, uh, is a, ooh. There, oh, there is there is a there is Xenosaurus. Okay. I think I did that. The we'll other go. One is a uh, uh, was it uh, Gigantosaurus? Really, Gigantosaurus? Oh God. Okay, so we're getting introduced to these dinosaurs. Cool shot. I will. I will. I will give them a, a cool shot where a good shot is due. Um. They're flying into Apple, and they got you know they got caught that they're you know flying in, and they release this gigantic pterodactyl, crashes the plane. It's going down. Bryce Dallas Howard, Claire, there she shoots out, parachutes down, gets into that beak dinosaur that you're talking about. Cool shot. She's crawling away, goes into a swamp. She goes under the water, and you get like that 
below water, above water shot of the dinosaur growling while she's underneath the water. I thought it was a cool shot. That was in the trailer. It was cool looking. I'll give him that. So Claire survives a, uh, uh, what's it, the, the escape chair thing? Uh, yeah. With no, no scratches. And they survive a plane crash. Yeah, I don't know how they survive a plane crash because the, the plane's crashing, going down, hits into a, a to a frozen pond. I think it's like a big pond, but it's up high in a mountain, like a frozen pond. It, wouldn't water be shooting into the plane? They came out, they weren't even wet. Uh, my thing is, is that weren't they up high? Didn't they have to scale that fucking mount down to go into the... Ugh, sorry. No, they didn't. No, they didn't Did because... No, they didn't, um, because after the interesting attack of a dinosaur I want to talk to you about, they, uh, they, they escaped that dinosaur attack by going to this elevator, remember? And they start going down. Oh, jeez, that's right, the elevator. No, I'm, I'm serious. Don't you remember that? No, no, that's that's right. It's just yeah. like one of those where I, I – it's just – you know, it's so it, stupid. Well, yeah, because I, I just I, I forgot about it. And it's just like one of those like it just feel like the dilemma in the writer's room. It's like, all right, well, uh, they're up here. How we get them down now? It's like, um, oh well, we could just say that it's you know it's Biosyn. There's it's the whole mountain is rigged. So there's an elevator over here right. built into the side of the mountain. They'll take them down. It's like, of course there is. Of, of course. course there's an elevator conveniently right there next to the crash site. Of course. All right. So power to it. When the first Jurassic Park came out, we knew what we knew as a society and also paleontologists knew what they knew as, as a group of what dinosaurs probably looked like, you know, because of the bones and more reptile. But as technology grows, we grow as people. There's a, not a theory anymore. I think it's factual that dinosaurs were more bird-like, that they may have had feathers as well. So when they crash land this plane into the frozen pond, they are greeted by a feathered, I'm assuming it's a velociraptor, right? Uh, sure. Is this there just to, is, and, and, and the reason why I'm asking this question is because I, I was asking this to myself while I was watching the film. Is this here just to, uh, just to say, hey, look, you know, this is what a real velociraptor probably would have looked like. And it swims underwater as well? Uh, well, we're not going to go there because. Why I, not? Well, because I would imagine, first off, Jordan, that most cold-blooded animals wouldn't be living in the winter or cold uh, climates. Well, they're cold-blooded, Eric. Hence the word. Uh huh. <laughs> Come on. That makes sense. It's a it's a it's a furry velociraptor. What does it make sense? That swims underwater. It's cold-blooded, uh -huh. and it lives in the cold. It's cold-blooded. Warm-blooded animals live in the warm areas. That's right. Uh huh. All the all the winter snakes that we that we get right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so stupid. This is where the movie lost me, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. And what I mean is, the movie didn't have me. Like I said, I'll give you an example. This is kind of my experience with watching this film. I'm with a six year old, and I go on Tuesdays because it's five dollars, and you get a free bag of popcorn. So she gets a bag of popcorn, I get a bag of popcorn. Five minutes into the movie, she drops and spills her whole bag of popcorn. So I'm trying to clean that up, and I give her my popcorn, and then you know she has to squirm, has to move, have to move. You know, like I have to go potty, and then ten minutes later, I have to go potty. The whole point of me explaining this is the movie didn't have me; it had like one eye of attention because I'm trying to focus on the little girl. But this is the point where the dinosaurs are attacking. This is where she's getting really fun and she's getting excited because she's here to see the dinosaurs. And I am too, right? But to see this feathered velociraptor, regardless if it the way it looked or the way it not it looked, as soon as it went under the water and does the slow motion coming out of the ice alien terminator kind of style, I, I'm like, I'm done. Uh, when is this movie when gonna it, like go? super swimming underneath the water and like Chris Pratt is just you know he gets pulled out super quick? It's just like I don't know, man. It's just yeah. Come on, it's really. it's I'm done. You know, and then they get on this little platform and it's trying to bite them. You know, and they just somehow find this elevator like we established. And they go underground. 
blah, blah, blah. So why all this is going on, we're kind of jumping around, but why this whole mess is going around too. Uh, in Malcolm, like I said, as a secret agent. And the only way to get into uh, secure access areas is to have these fancy bracelets. I will call them Apple Watches. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so um, Adley Sadler and Alan Grant gets this band from Ian Malcolm and they find, they dress as scientists, well, with robes and masks, and they find the locust breeding ground where they breed the locust. And it's like, oh my God, these are prehistoric locusts. And again, I'm not, I'm not paying attention because this is getting, really this is getting, to be. this is getting ridiculous. And they release the locusts and they're getting bit by locusts. And then they run into the little girl who has been there the whole time. And she let blue escape and ha ah, chaos, chaos. Right. Oh, God. I think I think somebody said the line in the movie about Ian Malcolm saying that it pays really good to be a chaos theorist right now or something <laughs> like that. I'm just like, okay, that's that's kind of true in a way. <laughs> um, God damn, what 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 else? Uh, there's there? a bunch of other stuff that would happen in there too. Like the the the, the different sources that that came in. Um, which I thought was kind of silly that uh, they seemed threatening at one point as they were stalking Claire um, as she was doing something. And then t- <laughs> the greatest weakness is um, that we found is uh, given by Chris Pratt is that uh, when a Diplosaurus uh, it threatens to spit on you and has the uh, his old collar up and everything, uh, just close its mouth. Choke him. Just, just he just grabbed his neck. Just, just close his mouth and give him a little choke and tell him to get out of here. Yeah, okay, let's talk about this real quick, right? That's so all, That's all you needed to do. So I call it Dilophosaurus. That's what they said in the first movie. I bet you're saying the actual word, but it, Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus, right? Well, I say Dilop. What doesn't matter, the whole point is, this dinosaur has not been in any of the movies since the first movie. And this was one of my favorite movies. And I looked at that to make sure my memory is correct. And it's correct. It wasn't in the second, third, or any of the other ones. It was only in the very first movie. And those Dilophosaurus in the first movie were terrifying. You know, with this yeah. with thing coming out. And it's like it's hit, it's rattling like a, like, like a rattlesnake. And it spits that black venom at you. Like, those were terrifying dinosaurs. So it was really cool to see them back. Question, though. In the first movie, they said when it spits, it spits out venom. So when it killed the Seinfeld guy, it spit venom and it got into his face. And it got into his eyes. He wiped it out and he goes into the van like nothing happens. At the end of the movie, Tim Cook gets it. He gets it by like four or five of them. And he lays on the ground acting like he's been bit by snakes. So how does this stuff actually work? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Didn't didn't they have didn't uh, Wayne Knight have protective eyewear? <laughs> no, he had his glasses. He did he dro- his glasses? Oh, he on. Did he took them off and he, he you know and then did he rub them in his eye? Is that what it was? Yeah, because he went down. Uh, to, he went down this little waterfall. Uh, Jerry, um, I don't yeah, know. And he spit into his eyes and he's oh. like, ah, my eyes. And then goes to another scene, comes back to him. He still has the gunk on his cheeks. But not his eyes. Ah, oh, ah, because it was raining. There you go. I just, I just don't understand this dinosaur. I just it, explained it for you there. Yeah, pure science right there. It's because it was raining, you know. It, it uh, diluted the, the the venom composition in the in the spit. Okay. Um. Sure. I, I hope that <laughs> I hope that's good enough for you. It, it, it's fine. So. All chaos is breaking loose. So what Tim Cook wants to do is that he wants to destroy the locust and sets the whole place on fire, the lab. Locusts somehow escape into a ventilation system because... This and, guy... Jesus. Go ahead. No, please. No, no, you, you, you're right. Okay. Where this, he's, such, he's such a stubborn child that he refuses, oh. obviously, to, to um, play ball with, with anything and, and really concede... To, to defeat and he's like no no it's gonna be my way take care of it get it done over and over again and then eventually it's just like all right well i guess we got to get rid of it and then he decides to to burn everything uh his his uh controlled little room which is um 
poorly done that the locusts can all just get out like that. Right, but they're dying. That's what I understand. See, it's, it's like the locusts are all catching on fire by these gigantic flamethrowers. They go to the vent system. They're out into the atmosphere. They're out. They're out. Yeah. And they just start to slowly fall, burning, dying to their death. Like, that doesn't make sense. I mean, they're trying to escape the fire, but they're all on fire. And, you know, they're they're just trying to escape, but they're just more on fire. And in the process, they are catching everything else on fire. So, so you do realize by, by the imagery is that this, that, that this was the director's way of saying this is the meteor shower, right? I mean, that's just obvious. Uh, it was a uh, pretty cool to get that, right? No, not really. You didn't like uh, also um, maybe the Noah's Ark effect, where just like all dinosaurs, please report to yes. Sector C. All I, I hate this so much. This is not at all what the first movie or the book were even trying to say. Oh, all predators God. to A. All plant eaters. To B, please, single file lines. I have a question. If they could mind control these dinosaurs, couldn't they in the control room just like like make gigantic source like not be mean? I yeah, there's a lot of what ifs on, on that. Like Okay. I'm not if they can it. control okay. the dinosaurs, then then why even let them roam free and like to, to hurt each other? Because like wouldn't that if if that's your product, then why have your product kill itself off? Right, and they can't have a product anymore, right? Because I don't think the government knows that this is even happening because the failure of the first Jurassic Park, the failure of Jurassic World, they're not going to be allowed to have another park. So what's the goal of keeping these dinosaurs? Is well, it be? Sorry to cut you off there, but all 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 those two were done on islands. Right. right. So that so like the, the, whose jurisdiction is it? Right, but I'm just trying to figure out like even if they do a park, I mean like what's their goal to keep these dinosaurs? Is it because they this is, that's what I understand about the villain. Like is he keeping these dinosaurs for what? To actually do genetic testing to help solve cancers and illnesses? Is he just keeping these dinosaurs to do nothing? Like what's the point of keeping these dinosaurs? He had said for, uh, yes, for, for cures, for advancements. And so then he's not a villain. Well, until he became one. Do you know, well, I, Icarus flew too close to the sun. Like, he wanted more and more until the point where he's just like, oh, you know what? We could probably just do this. We could uh, um, eradicate, you know, world hunger if we create a superfood. And, and by doing that, we can eliminate all the other farms by doing it this way. Yeah, whatever his plan is. Okay. For All right. I, I, I that's just kind of how people how a villain would think. Like this is how I would put a villain in here is uh, and laid out more uh, more uh, I guess methodically is that like they should be focused on like no what I'm doing is going to help everybody. You don't understand. My plan is to help the dinosaurs and the humans by doing this. He, you know, for, for him to have a vision or that the, the villain to have a vision that only they see, that no one else sees, that's better. But this villain doesn't have that. This villain is just is just greedy. <laughs> yeah, just like the producers. He, they're just like the villain. It doesn't make sense. Keep going. What doesn't make sense is we get the big fight at the end, right? Everybody's escaping. Dr. Wu's like... I need to study the girl. We can stop these locusts and save the world, right? And they and they capture Blue, and, and then in Malcolm, he's funny, right? I, I mean, he's funny. He even oh, says yeah. to he was like he was saying he was saying to Chris Pratt, "Is that a is that a dinosaur strapped to your shoulder?" Yeah. I mean, it's like small little things like that. He was fun. I I, I really enjoyed him. He didn't act like Ian Malcolm in the first movie, though. He acted Jeff Goldblum mostly in mm -hmm. this one. Um, so we get the big fight, which I just didn't like the part where my daughter's like, go T-Rex, go. We get the T-Rex versus the gigantic source. Gigantic source beats the crap out of the T-Rex. Why is the T-Rex always at the save the day? I don't know why, but he has to. Yeah, and, come on, man. It's the T-Rex. Yeah, but it's like, just because it, 
It didn't work in the la- in the in the first movie either. It made no sense. The team. <sighs> but, yeah, but, but call, this is what happens myself. with the franchise. This is is like it's and I compared the T Rex to to the Bowser because it's the best way I can think of it. But is like once a bad guy, but now the good guy, or or now that it's it's the the bad guy that people love to cheer for, the Darth Vader that you know everyone likes Darth Maul. It, it, it's. It's that bad guy that that you that people love still. Okay, I'm just it just it. Okay, I don't want to go on a rant, make the episode longer when it needs to. But, but then, but right, like cause, okay, because T Rex was the the villain in the, in the first the villain. <laughs> he wasn't even a villain. The T Rex wasn't nothing. The the, the 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 reason why they do this at the end of these movies is because when the because in the because in the first movie when the kids are being stalked by the raptors and they thought they were going to get it out of nowhere. T-Rex shows up. We didn't hear footsteps. How did he get into the lobby? We don't know, but it didn't matter because at that movie, it was so good. You needed a stupid moment and something to cheer for. It, that doesn't happen in this movie. You um, Maybe I missed it too. Uh, help me if, if I missed it. Uh, did they give an iconic uh, the, the stomp with the, with the ripples in a puddle? No, nope, not in this one. But what they did get is this stupid lawn circle fountain, big, huge thing with the waterfall, and the T-Rex head is walking behind it to create the symbol of the Jurassic Park symbol. Oh, right. That was, oh, I, oh, I groaned on that one. Yeah. Oh. There's a few little, uh, well, whatever. And, and the T-Rex, regardless that these are wild creatures, decides to team up with the Freddy Cougar dinosaur and shoves the gigantic saurus's neck through the claws, and then the Freddy Krueger dinosaur and the T Rex are like, "We're cool and partners now." They and did then a every... fist bump, dude. They did a, oh. a tail five slap. They pretty much, they pretty much could have, you know. So then we get the end uh, monologue, right? Uh, Owen gives Blue back to uh, Beta back to Blue, and. Beta runs off, but she, but Beta has to come back and give the stare down to Owen. Pretty much say, "Sorry that I bit your hand. Thank you for my daughter." And Owen's like, "You're my girl, Blue." You know, that's, that's why Blue just sitting in her nest, just just oh, what are they gonna do? Just knitting a blanket. Mm-hmm. Just, Bring back my my so, baby. So fucking stupid. <laughs> I was so mad. And then, you know, we get the monologue of dinosaurs and humans will exist. And then they have the, – this is where they jump the shark. They're like dinosaurs and animals and humans going to live together. They have bronchiosaurs walking with elephants. They have, they, have, they have that gigantic sea dinosaur swimming with whales. It, it, what? Are yeah. you serious? And, uh, and that the Bison Valley – will be a sanctuary. A sanctuary, which is fine, right? They need a sanctuary for these things to go so there's no more. It's just seeing dinosaurs walk side by side with our now real world animals just frustrated me so much. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. (laughs) If I was an elephant, I'd be like, what the heck is this thing? Like, what what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, so, so frustrated. All right. You know what? We have bashed this movie. We talked about pretty much everything we could talk about. So this is probably no shock what we could give our popcorn ratings. We'll see. Eric, what is your popcorn rating for Jurassic World Dominion? Oh, it's a dog shit movie. It's a no bag. Uh, it's, it's the worst one of the of the three of the new franchise. Um. Listen, I, I enjoyed the the three uh, return of uh, Statler, Malcolm, and, and Grant. Um, that's not a, a band from the '60s, by the way, but I enjoyed their return. I thought it was great to see him on camera. So, a really good part of this movie. Uh, I don't like Chris Pratt's character in in this movie. He's just kind of Johnny Fix It All. He's just there to to always just just give me the gun, uh, you know, give me the ball, I'll, I'll I'll score the touchdown. I get it. I don't like that they added um, that Han Solo character to this, who it just happens to be an expert at everything and always seems to 
be able to have the airplane and have the right amount of time and space and know how to fly. It seems just, you know, was that a Deus Ex Machina pilot there? Yeah. It, it's just, you know, the answer to everything. There's no challenge for anybody here, um, at least not from for me. But again, I'm, I, I understand that, that this is just a playground ride. Like this is, just like you said, as, as you're, uh, if you, as you observed in the audience there, this isn't for me anymore. This isn't supposed to be the, oh, the, the what if uh, thriller um, that it was in Jurassic Park. The, you know, uh, we never uh, stop or we never stop to ask why or however uh, whatever that quote is that I'm, I'm going to screw up. And I'll, I'll probably catch later as I catch this but you know like it's it's so different from what it used to be it's just this um fun unique dinosaur adventure now the big part of like the the lumber yard with the the brontosaurus when it got up and they had to use the flares to get it out of the way right the visuals are why you're watching this but there are so many other visual movies for dinosaurs now that yeah, just playing off of that. I think I wanted to something. I would have liked to have seen another like uh, techno kind of sci-fi thriller like Jurassic Park. It'd be, I think it's time for something like that. Uh, but this is not that. Okay. All right. So no bag for you. I'm not gonna watch this movie again. I don't plan on watching any of the franchise again. I I, I really don't. Um, Maybe one day, if you know there, there's a there's a kid in the picture, and they have it like for dinosaurs, and this maybe gets added to something. But I will try to steer them away from this and put more, uh, well, I'll put better dinosaur movies in front of them. But this is not okay. gonna be one of them. Well, one of the things that really irritated me about this movie is in the very very first movie. Uh, you didn't know really who these characters were, so you didn't know if one of them was going to get eight or not. Like, we didn't know if somebody was going to die, right? That was the whole thrill of it. In this movie, they tried to do that for a little bit, but after they all survived that gigantic Saurus attack on that little mini tower thing, I'm like, okay, nobody's going to die. And, and unfortunately, this movie needed somebody to die. Somebody needed to to make us feel something for it. And it didn't. It, it, it needed to be one of the original three. Uh, for me, myself, Eric, yes, I agree with you. This is the first, not say the first time, but I mean, you and I universally agree. This is a no bag. This, this is definitely a no bag movie. This is really bad. Uh, the plot doesn't make sense. The villain doesn't make sense. He looks straight up like Tim Cook. I, I don't know why you make him look like this. Um, I don't know why they do a lot of things that they do in this movie. I'm really upset with where the franchise has gone, and I'm glad that the producers have said that we are putting a pin in this franchise for a little while because we have no idea what we're going to do in the future. And that's good. They made their trilogy. We're good. And therefore, I'm good. Right? Absolutely. Adventures <sighs> of Dino City made more sense than this movie. Oh, Jesus. Pre-hysteria. Oh, Oh, so frustrating. Made more sense than this movie with right. Brian Austin Green. Mm -hmm. Well, Eric, you know what? You know, the other thing that does make sense, though? It makes total sense. Have admitting chlorines in your blood. May the force be with you. Yep. There we go. And and also with you. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> little tease for next week's episode. Eric, this was a fun discussion. I actually really enjoyed this conversation with you. I don't know how this was going to go. I didn't know if you were going to give it a no bag. I knew I was. So, yeah. All right. Well, like always, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Check us out at movieguyspodcast.pompey.com. You can download our episodes on any social media platform that you have that's for podcasting. And like always, next week, we'll be back with another awesome episode. Have a good night.